Good morning or good afternoon. My name is Jackson Dalton. I'm the president of Black Box Safety. Today we're join, joined by four colleagues. We're going to be discussing uh, the benefits and differences between four key supplier diversity certifications that are available to veteran-owned businesses. Uh, this certification process is meaningful to me because my company, Black Box Safety, holds each of the four certifications that we're going to discuss today. And as uh, a direct result, it took a lot of time and energy and manpower to uh, go through those certification processes. But as a direct result, over the past four years, we have had significant past performance with State of California Department of General Services, uh, the uh, Department of Veterans Affairs, uh, and we are currently working on active solicitations uh, and opportunities with the state of New York and uh, sponsors of disability inclusion. So this is uh, a topic that is uh, very meaningful to me. Uh, I'm gonna introduce uh, our four panelists. We are joined today by Michael Aguilio uh, with the state of California, Department of General Services, Anthony Tomselli, uh, State of New York Service Disabled Veteran Owned Business uh, Certification. Uh, Chanel Bankston Carter with the Department of Veterans Affairs Center for Verification and Evaluation. And Philip, please forgive me, I'm gonna mispronounce your name, but uh, Philip with uh, Disability Inclusion. How do we pronounce your last name, Philip? Hey Jackson, it's uh, Devlieger, but Philip is fine. Philip Devlieger with Disability Inclusion. So I'm gonna be asking uh, the panelists a, a series of questions. Uh, if you have a question for one of the panelists, please feel free to submit that question uh, in the chat function and I will uh, pose and respond to the question as time allows. Um, but first, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask each of the panelists uh, to tell us about uh, themselves, uh, the agency which they represent uh, and the typical candidates for their certification program. So in other words, you know, who would apply, who would be interested in pursuing a certification uh, with their program? So I'll start with Michael with the State of California Department of General Services. If you wouldn't mind just telling the audience uh, a little bit about who you are, uh, the agency you represent, and uh, candidates for your uh, DVBE program. Go ahead. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I guess for some of you, maybe it's in the afternoon, um, Eastern Standard Time. My name is Michael Aguilio. I do work for the state of California in a, a branch called Small Business and Disabled Business Enterprise Services. Our primary function is to help businesses understand how to do business with state government and wherever possible, provide you with contacts will hopefully lead to contracts. Uh, I've been a, an employee for the state of California for almost 30 years. And I am a proud byproduct of a military family. My dad spent 30 years in the military, uh, his brother and his aunt, or my aunt, all military people. Uh, I chose civil service profession instead um, and missed out on some of the opportunities uh, and benefits that you have as a veteran. Nevertheless though, the state of California is looking for veteran services, uh, businesses to do business with the state of California, primarily because one, it's the right thing to do. And three, uh, two, we have a 3% inclusion goal, uh, a little lower than New York has. Um, but the fact is that we're trying to include veteran services in our operations. The state does have three certifications though. Many veteran business enterprises can be certified as small. So we have a small business certification, a small business doing public works, and a disabled veteran business enterprise. You can be certified in all three uh, and take advantage of the benefits there. Uh, the other thing that uh, our target, of course, is veterans, unfortunately, that are California veterans. Um, they have to be housed in California or domiciled in California. It's a California-based program. Uh, so that's one of the caveats that uh, we have. But we are definitely looking for veterans to be a part of. We have only 1,600 veterans in our database, uh, and we're looking to include more. We have over, uh, I think it's 16,000, I got to look it up, uh, in our database totally, uh, and only 1,600 that are veterans. So my recommendation is if you are a veteran and a domicile in California, to please join our program. We have a lot of benefits for you. 
Thanks, Michael. Great to hear from you. I really appreciate it. Uh, now is uh, Anthony Tomaselli with the State of New York. Are you available to uh, share a little bit? Oh, I'm happy to. Uh, thank you for having me here. I really appreciate the opportunity. Um, as as uh, Jackson mentioned, my name is Anthony Tomaselli. I am with uh, New York State Office of General Services. We have a division of service disabled veterans business development. Uh, I was created as a result of a law that was passed in 2014, the Service Disabled Veteran Owned Business Act. Uh, myself and another gentleman, we were hired uh, right when that law was passed and essentially we were handed uh, the law on paper and told to make this happen, uh, which we have. We were very fortunate to be able to, to borrow a lot from what was happening in California and what the VA has done with their CVE and also New York State's uh, well-known for its very aggressive minority and women business enterprise program. Uh, as uh, <clears throat> Michael mentioned, we have the uh, a 6% goal in New York State, and nobody really knows the truth about where that goal came from, but there's a little bit of a, uh, a myth that uh, <laughs> when Governor Cuomo saw the original legislation that had a 3% goal on it, he asked why why 3%, why are we setting a 3% goal? And the answer was, well, that's, that's what California does. And uh, he said, well, I, I, we could be twice as good as California, so we'll set a 6% goal. So uh, our, our primary focus has been recruiting businesses. Uh, you don't have a program without certified businesses to, to meet the goals of the program. And uh, we've really kind of locked in on, on what are the excuses that, that agencies and contractors give us or why they can't meet an SDVOB goal. And the number one goal is always, uh, we can't find enough businesses. So we've made it our number one priority to find more businesses. Uh, we stretch out across the country. Our, our legislation, the New York State SDVOB legislation does not require a business to be domiciled in New York State in order to qualify for our certification. You can be from another state. You just have to demonstrate to us through the application process that you, uh, are making an economic contribution to New York State, that you uh, establish a significant business presence in New York State. That's the, the key term that they're looking for. Uh, and we can work with you on, on helping you identify ways that you can establish that presence uh, and find opportunities with us. You know, we don't have a program without certified businesses. Uh, we're in the business of finding disabled veteran entrepreneurs and getting them through the process and getting them certified and, and putting you in a position where you can compete for work with New York state agencies and authorities. Excellent. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, Chanel, are you uh, available to talk about uh, yourself, the agency you represent and the typical candidates for your vets first verification program? Oh, yes, I am. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Chanel Bankston Carter, and I am the Director of Strategic Outreach and Communications at the Department of Veteran Affairs Office of Small and Disadvantaged Business Ut Utilization, better known as OSTABU. I'm also a partner and part of the Certification or Verification Evaluation Program of CVE. I am an Army veteran. I am the daughter of a World War II veteran, and my husband recently retired after 30 years um, as an Army officer as well. So we are well ingrained into um, the veteran community. Now, our program as a whole and in a nutshell is that we are here for the veteran-owned small business community. We are vet first. We are not vet only, but our priority is our service disabled and veteran-owned small businesses. We truly stand by uh, what President Lincoln said to care for him who has bore the battle and for his widow and his orphan. And we do that through economic opportunities first to our service disabled and veteran owned small businesses. We are the only federal agency that has a hierarchy and our hierarchy con consists of service disabled, veteran owned, small business, uh, women owned, hub zone, et cetera. In our program as well, we also have an initiative now 
for our women veteran-owned small businesses because we are so um, in tune with the veteran community, but we know that we also are working with our women veteran to help them be on par with our male counterparts. Our secretary is so committed to the Department of Veteran Affairs and our goals with the men, with the veteran population is that we have a 15 and 17 percent um, service disabled veteran owned small business business goal initiative as well. Last year alone, we did over $6 billion to our service disabled and veteran owned. We are committed, we are dedicated, and we are constantly working with others. In addition, because our program does what it should do, and we work to constantly bring in the veteran population, we work with the other federal agencies as well as the commercial partners, no. They do not have to use our program, our verification, but they love it because they know they're getting what they're getting and they know that our veterans have been verified and that they are who they say that they are. So yes, as a whole, I'm glad to be here. Our program is all about the service disabled, our veteran on small business community. And thank you for the opportunity to participate on this panel. Thanks, Chanel. Appreciate it. And uh, Philip, you're up. Please tell us about yourself and your organization and uh, some qualified candidates for your program. Hey, Jackson, thank you. And um, hi, everyone. My name is Philip DeVlieger, and I am the uh, Vice President of Supplier Diversity at Disability Inn. Uh, Disability Inn is the leading third party certifier of businesses that are owned by people with disabilities including our service disabled veterans. So, so we are here to serve our corporate partners, um, which are made up of um, Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies. We have currently well over 220 corporate partners, all looking to do business with businesses that are owned by people with disabilities. So we help empower them to become more disability inclusive. Thank you, Philip. Appreciate sure. it. So the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, what makes your certification unique. Um, Philip, you just uh, finished. We can start with you. Um, what makes your certification different? than the other three that we just heard from? Well, it's really around the disability component. Disability is our world. Um, we, as I mentioned, help empower all of, all of our corporate partners and communities to be more disability inclusive. So as far as a certification um, compared to other certifications like minority and women and veteran, um, we really do hone in on the disability aspect of someone's business ownership. So, um, it, you know, looking at the landscape of, of supplier inclusion, we, uh, we, we look to see that disability is kind of the final frontier, really, among, among diverse communities that have been traditionally excluded from procurement opportunities. So, so we are here to help advance disability inclusion among um, our corporations and our suppliers. So just so the audience understands, do you have to be a disabled veteran or a veteran to be eligible for your certification? You do need to have a disability. So whether you are a service disabled veteran or a veteran with a disability, um, that is the one factor with our certification that is a requirement. That, that your your business is owned and operated and controlled by a majority person with a disability. Okay, and are there any uh, you know benefits to membership that um, that are unique with disability in? Uh, oh, uh, like lots, lots, lots of, lots of benefits. Um, but pr probably the largest benefit really is our network. Um, the ability for our suppliers to be able to connect with our corporate partners to pursue procurement opportunities. Like I said, if you, if you are 
um, looking to do business in the private sector with Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies, this is the certification for you. Got it. That makes sense. All right. Thanks again, Philip. Sure. Chanel, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, what sets your program apart from, say, state of New York or state of California? What is uh, unique about the uh, VETS First Verification Program through OSDEBU? Well, in a nutshell, we're VET First. And what makes our program so unique is that um, we are the Department of Veteran Affairs. And who more so than to carry on that tradition and to move forward with the veteran population. Yes, we're vet first. And I did say earlier, we're not vet only, but we do give priority as far as set asides and, um, you know, and, and sole source to our service disabled and veteran owned small business community. In addition to that, our program is also federally mandated. We are here because we want to ensure that we give economic opportunities to our veteran community. Now, in addition to that, our program, we know if a veteran is a veteran, we also have the opportunities to get access to their records where you may go to another agency and they have to do the DD-214, you go through a third party, the process, et cetera. We have that information. Yes, we use it strictly to determine their eligibility for the program. We use it to ensure that they are crossing the I's that, I mean, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, that this program is unique for them. In addition, with our program that we have, one of the worst things I'll tell you is for you to, um, if there is another agency or if you're uh, bidding on a contract, and let's just say there's a protest. Once that protest happens, then all kinds of things happen. And you may find that that small business is a, is a pass through, that there are other things. And the one thing with the veteran population is that we do an amazing job, but it only takes one time to do something wrong and people will remember everything. So what makes this program unique? The program at the Department of Veteran Affairs is yes, we do have others, but it is developed and designed. If you are not a service disabled or a veteran, you cannot go through our verification process. We currently have approximately 16,000 that are verified in our program and we're constantly shortening this program. We are now about 16 to 20 days for an individual to get verified under their initial verification. That's what's so good about our program. Now, is your, your certification, Service Disabled Veteran Owned Small Business, is that just for people that are interested in working for the Department of Veterans Affairs or is that certification recognized by other agencies, whether they be state or local? Everyone recognizes our, our certification, our verification. Um, it is something, it is not an easy process to go through. It is very grueling. I heard you say that you've also done work with it, so you know the process. So yes, it is a very, it's, it's, it's a very detailed process. That's because we don't want in and everyone trying to perpetrate to be a veteran or have a business and, and they aren't. But is it recognized? Other federal agencies, the commercial space, even the state of New York, et cetera. They love our verification program and they want to know where our veterans are. So no, you are not uh, required only to do business with the Department of Veteran Affairs if you are verified. You have the ability to diversify your portfolio. And there are, for those that don't know, there are hundreds of federal government agencies uh, in the United States. So it's a uh, it's a solid certification to have. So thank you for that, Chanel. You're so welcome. Um, Anthony, tell us about your certification. In other words, what's unique about it? What is different? Not better or worse, but what what makes your certification unique? What are some, some key takeaways? Sure. So, uh, you know, we obviously have to implement the legislation as it's written. And uh, in the, the legislation for the New York State SDVOB program, there's, there's uh, really two key points that really separate us from the VA and the CVE certification. Uh, businesses that want to be certified with New York State, they have to have the New York State presence that I mentioned before. Uh, 
They don't have to be domiciled in New York State, but they have to show us some kind of uh, documentation or demonstration of their New York State uh, business presence. The other uh, significant difference is we are, our program requires a minimum of a 10% service connected disability. I understand that the VA certification allows for a zero uh, percent disability certification, which has kind of created a few little sticky situations where we've got people come, well, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a certified SDVOB with the, with the VA. Why can't I be certified with your program? Well, I implement the laws, I don't write the laws. The, uh, so th those are really the two, the two key standout differences. Uh, we actually, um, as Chanel mentioned, we actually look at the VA certification. If you have the CVE verification, you can send that to us and, and we don't really wanna see your, your corporate documents anymore. We're gonna trust that they vetted those documents and, and we're gonna be primarily concerned with making sure, yes, you've got that 10% disability and yes, you've, uh, you've got your New York State business presence. I do like to brag about the speed of our certification process. As I mentioned in, in my, my introduction, our priority is certifying businesses. We, we know we don't have a program without certified businesses. So we've managed to, to get our certification process down to about 30 business days for an applicant. And if you come to us with the CVE certification ahead of time, we can probably get you done in, in 20 days or so. Uh, that's really, you know, and that's not to say that we're not doing a, a, a very effective job of vetting our businesses. Uh, as most of the businesses we've got certified here in New York, now we actually do site visits on our certification. So within those 30 business days, if we can get to you to see you in person, we're doing that. We want to talk to you. We want to check you out. We want to know that you're the real deal. We cannot have uh, uh, fraudulent SDVOBs out there tarnishing the reputation of the program. Uh, so those, those are the real, the real key differences with us. The 10% minimum on the service-connected disability the uh, New York State business presence, and uh, you know, just the fact that we're super fast, and we, we try to get you get you in and out as, as quickly as possible because it is, you know, that the program is built around that. That's what we've got to do. Got it. All right. Thank you, Anthony. Is uh, Michael available to comment on uh, the DVBE for Department of General Services, State of California? Well, thank you very much. First of all, I want to get my numbers correct. Uh, earlier, I said it was 16. It's actually 19,000 that we have in our database as small okay. business and DVBE. Unfortunately, only of that is only 2,400 of those are certified as DVBE. So we have a small pool. However, we're trying to increase that because we have an incentive program. You know, we have a one of the biggest things that we have is we have a 5% up to a 5% discount on a bid, depending on the evaluation process of an incentive. So zero up to five. And if you're certified as a small, there's a preference program and most DVBEs uh, are small businesses as a whole. They just happen to be a veteran, which, so we gave a 5% on top of that. So there's a, a huge, and I guess I'll use the word set aside for veteran participation in states contracting uh, so that you can have being certified of those. We too, like Anthony, we pride ourselves in the speed of their certification. Our certification is done online. As a small business, like I said earlier, DVBs can be small, you can get certified in less than an hour. Uh, however, as a veteran, we require some documentations. One of the things is that you have to prove that you are, as in New York, 10% service disabled. Uh, we have to get that verification. You have to be majority owner. So one or more of the owners have to have the majority. And then we require the veteran business owners to participate in whatever contracts they win. They cannot be any kind of pass-throughs. So we do have some uh, qualifications you have to meet, but we have a huge amount of benefits. We have the, what we have a small business disabled veteran business enterprise option where the state can look into the database itself and award up to a quarter of a million dollar contract for goods and services. And if it has anything to do with public works, $333,000 uh, that we can award a contract for just because you are certified as a small business and or DVB or both. So there's a huge amount of benefits. The state is trying to make sure that the businesses that we have in the state uh, benefit from the certification that we have. Uh, us, like New York, we're, we're pretty much on par with each other. 
Um, but the fact is, is that's one of the things that we pride ourselves in. Here's the other thing that we do. If a DVBE finds a solicitation within the state contracting that is out there right now, and they're trying to go through the process, one of the things that we do is they just have to send us the front page of the documentation indicating that there is a uh, preference or incentive for DVBEs. We will, for whatever reason, expedite their paperwork. So if they're we'll try to get it done within 48 hours so they can take advantage of their benefits that they would normally have if they were already certified. So we, we implore veterans to get certified way beforehand uh, because uh, the benefits are so, um, you know, so good for them. We also uh, have uh, reciprocity partners. We have cities and counties and many of the municipalities in the state of California all have programs for small businesses and disabled veteran enterprises that they have their own set of sides for. So we they include our certification in their process. Once you get certified by the state, then you don't really have to go through all the process to get certified by any city or county or the municipalities that are involved in our program. Uh, similar to what Chanel has. Um, you can parlay the certification and use that outside of the state as well. Not outside of the state as a as whole, but the programs within the state. So there is a huge amount of benefits for veterans. And we try to, you know, we're looking at including our following Anthony's lead to where they have a 6%, we have a three. We're trying to make sure that we increase that. Uh, but as you know, like he had said earlier, I don't write the rules. My job is to make sure they're enforced, but I'm always trying to work with veteran to increase their opportunities and wherever possible, put in them contact with their legislators so that they can let them know what we might be able to do better and to increase other guys' goals. But, you know, again, I want to thank all the panelists for sharing my time, sharing, allow me to share their time with them. And of course, you, Jackson, the hosted uh, as a moderator and the VIB for uh, putting this all together. Uh, I hope that all of them who are attending really find value we have to share and take advantage of it all because it's real here for you. And I want you to make sure that whoever you're going doing business, Chanel, Philip, Anthony, we are really dedicated to make sure that veterans are part of procurement, no matter what state we're in or what organization we're with. Well, I know from personal experience that that is true, Michael. Um, you guys uh, have been super helpful in the past and we really appreciate that and your participation here today. One of the questions, so we've got 60 participants here listening to listening to you. So you've got uh, a great audience here. Um, one of the questions that keeps popping up uh, with the state of California is uh, domicile and residency. So does, does the owner have to reside in California? Does the uh, corporate headquarters have to be in California? Is it sufficient to just have, you know, one or two employees of that country or of that company residing in the state of California. Can you answer uh, that question? No, I think you said it correctly. And unfortunately, the way we have it is that the owner or a case of cop, uh, corporation has to be domiciled in California. Although if they're, dom if they're domiciled outside the state of California and they do have employees here in California, we don't necessarily recognize that as being a part of meeting the uh, requirements that we have. Uh, that's one of the differences that you know, we have in regards to what Anthony has. Um, so that's a caveat that, you know, hopefully maybe we'll look into and, and get into change because many veterans come to me and say, hey, look, when I served, I didn't serve California. Right. I served the, you know, the United States of America. Unfortunately, uh, you know, this is how our rules rate and that's what it is until such time we, you know, we get, uh, vote or approval to change something like that but it is a california-based program but that's that's how it is you know how it is jackson you're doing business with us right now uh, but that's that's the key component as it is sits yep the company and the owner must reside in the state of california and that's unique to your certification that is correct that is unique unless yeah. something has changed since the last time i looked but that's my understanding to me yep okay well some of the audience members might be wondering, why would I do this? Uh, we're talking about the certification and how valuable it is and, uh, you know, the differences, the pros and cons, but why? Why would I be interested in pursuing a certification? It's going to take time. It's going to take energy. It's going to take resources. And I would say that if, 
if you and your organization are interested in working with either the state of California, uh, the state of New York, um, the VA, Department of Veterans Affairs, or another federal uh, agency that recognizes uh, that certification, um, that would be a really good reason to pursue one of these certifications. Um, so there has to be a meaning behind it. You, you know, the, the company needs to be interested in doing business with one of these agencies. It's not just a certification for the sake of having a certification. So there needs to be, um, you know, a strong interest behind pursuing one of these certifications. But if you decide that it makes business sense, if, a, if an organization says, yes, we want to work with one of these state agencies, or we want to work with one of the uh, private companies uh, that recognizes the disability inclusion uh, disability in certification. If that's our goal, okay, we know we want to get certified. So what next? What do we do next? And I think that's where sometimes there can be some misunderstandings. Um, when I was first starting the certification process, I would take talk to other veterans that said, oh man, that veteran certification process takes six to 12 months. It was, it was terrible. And, uh, and that was not my experience at all with any one of these programs. And, uh, and I think that my experience was different because um, I started with research. Every single one of these programs has a homepage. So uh, State of California has a homepage uh, for uh, DVBE. Uh, State of New York has a homepage. I believe it's their OSDEBU page. I know that's uh, also the VA. Uh, State, of, State of New York is Division of Service Disabled, so it's ogs.ny.gov forward slash veterans. Um, Disability Inn has a homepage. It's, I believe, disabilityin.org. Um, and so I'm going to ask each of the panelists to kind of talk about this. But the point I'm trying to drive home is that if you're interested in one of these certifications, that you need to visit these websites and look at the qualifications and then find out you know, what documents are going to be required and get all that information together ahead of time. Um, for example, the Vets First Verification Program, they have a town hall that I believe is on the first and third uh, Tuesday of the month where you can do a live webinar like this and you can get a presentation on what the application process looks like. So that's the next topic of the discussion is, what does the application process look like start to finish? Uh, what is expected of the, the veteran business owner to have together and to be ready? Um, are they gonna be visited in person? Is there gonna be a phone call? Um, so I'll start with uh, Philip with uh, Disability In. Uh, can you please tell us about your uh, certification process? Absolutely, thanks Jackson. Um, it is an online process. Um, I shared the link to our website a little, a little bit earlier um, but it is disabilityin.org, and all you have to do is click on the header, what we do, and click on supplier diversity, and it will take you to our certification pages. Um, it, is a, it is a rigorous process, although I will tell you, if you are verified through the VA and, and hold that verification, that process is shortened, and the paperwork that's required is, is much less than if you are not. So we recognize um, that verification as well as if you are a woman-owned business certified through WeBank, we also recognize that certification as well as the National Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce's certif certification. So those three um, verifications and certifications are, are actually abbreviated as far as the process. Our process normally takes around 60 days, um, more or less, could be, could be longer, could be shorter, just depending on how prepared the applicant is with all of the different paperwork that's required. So um, we have a great manager of certification on our staff who can walk you through those requirements. We also post all of the documentation that's required on our website as a checklist. So you can go through that and make sure that you have everything pulled together um, to make the process as, as easy as possible for you. Thank you, Philip. And then would there be, uh, is there an on-site visit? There typically is. However, during COVID, um, we have moved to a virtual site interview. 
So that it's still a robust interview, um, but obviously not in person. It's done virtually now because of COVID. That's right. Okay, and I, if I remember correctly, my uh, on-site virtual interview took maybe an hour and a half, and they wanted to see um, our office, our storefront. Um, they wanted to understand, you know, the processes and our procedures and who is responsible for doing what. So it was a very thorough interview, but it was a very positive experience. Awesome. Great to hear. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Chanel, if someone's interested in pursuing uh, service disabled veteran owned uh, small business certification through, uh, uh, through Ozdebu, through CVE, um, what can they expect and what should they do to get prepared for that process? Well, Jackson, the first thing we do is that um, anyone that's interested in the process, we love to tell them uh, to attend our pre-application uh, workshops that we do twice a month, the first and third um, of the month. But uh, that's one of the first things that we do. In addition, we also stress um, you shouldn't be paying for CV uh, verification. That is not something that you should pay for. Um, as a matter of fact, we work very closely with our PTAC counselors. All of our PTAC counselors around the country are verified in regards to our program. We want you to have eyes and ears and someone to help you through that process. In addition, we've done something a little different over the last few years. I've been with Ostabu for eight years. And when we first started out, you know, the process was, it's still very rigorous. And it was taken upward to 120 days. As I said, now we're between first initial between 16 and 25 days because we've changed the process and we've brought in where we have case managers. You have the same case manager that starts with you and getting in your forms to when you finish the process. As you're putting in your documents, we want to know everything from, you know, you have to be, um, you know, 51% owner. We have to, from the ownership and control, we have to look at your business this plan. You have to look at your taxes, you know, your structure, etc. All of those things are done. And when you put those documents in, there's actually a case manager that's looking at your information and saying, hey, you know what, this is what you need to change or you need to do. We want to make sure that we help you instead of being a hindrance. And so that person is going to walk you through the process, help you get those documents, tell you what you need. If you've been um, in your business, but let's say you became ill and you were unable to work for, for, for six or eight months. There are exceptions to the rule. What, how do you fill out that paperwork? How do you show what happened during that time when you were out medically? So there are a lot of different things now um, that we have in place to help and move you forward. In addition with that, we want to make sure that as we're looking at the whole process, as you're filling out your documents, as you're getting in your paperwork and you have that case manager that's there to assist, then we say after you get verified, what happens next? So we actually have a component now to the program that gives you the education and training that you have. Because if you go to our website, not only will you see all of the regulations, the policies, the documents that govern our verification program and all the documents that you need to have. Yes, we do do an, um, we do an onsite. And the reason we do the onsite is that we want to make sure we want to see your process. We want to make Make sure that you're in control. We want to make sure how are you paying your bills, what are the business, what's your flow, etc. Uh, so all of those things are in place uh, that we have as part of our um, on-site that we do with the veterans. In addition, we also now are doing some targeted marketing to the veteran-owned small business community because there are things that the VA is in need of we buy certain things. Not everything that everyone sells, the VA buys. So if you strictly want to do business with the VA, we tell you to make sure that you go to our work, our website, look and see what the VA are, is buying. What are our top 25 spins? Because you want to know those things because it's nothing worse than to go through a rigorous process and at the end of the day, you don't get an opportunity to sell to the VA because what you're selling, the VA 
FDA is not buying. So we have those things that are in place because we really wanna make sure that this is value added to you as you're going through the process. Thank you, Chanel. And everything Chanel just discussed is at va.gov forward slash Ozdebu, yes. which is spelled O-S-D-B-U, Office of Small Business Development and Business. Office of Small Disadvantaged <laughs> Business Utilization. Thank you, Chanel. You're yeah. welcome. So, uh, and then one thing you mentioned that's important to note is that there are some third party organizations out there that will probably tell uh, their potential candidates that uh, going through your process is too difficult and challenging and that they need to pay, you know, a lot of money uh, to get certified. Um, and so what you said is that is not true uh, no. for the, uh, the Vets First verification program. You do yes. not have to pay for that. Um, yeah. And you should be weary of anybody that's offering to uh, apply for that certification on your behalf. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely. That's why we changed up the program and we streamlined the program because we wanted to remove any appearance or the thought that a veteran would need to have to pay dollars to get that done. Got it. And you also mentioned uh, the resource of a PTAC. For those that don't know what a PTAC is, it stands for uh, procurement. procurement Technical Go ahead. Assistance Center. Yes, Procurement Technical Acquisition Center. Correct. And uh, Our counselor. They're, they're, yeah, and those PTAC counselors are located all over the country. Yes, And there should be one uh, close to wherever you happen to reside. Um, and so the website for PTAC is aptac-us.org. Or you could just Google find a PTAC. Or you can go to our website and we yep. have, if you go to our website, to our verification, we have a map in every PTAC counselor Perfect. across the country that's on that so that they can assist you wherever you're located. Excellent. And they're very helpful for any business that's interested in becoming uh, a government contractor. Yes. So wonderful. Uh, Anthony, someone's interested in becoming uh, certified with the state of New York. Uh, what should they do next? Well, you know, first start with our website. You know, you mentioned it before, but it's ogs.my.gov forward slash veterans. All the information you need to, to know what to do with our program is there. Uh, we're still a relatively low tech uh, program. We, we've grown way faster than I think anybody in New York State thought we would. Our application process, there is a PDF on our on our website. You're going to go to our website. You're going to download that PDF, and you're going to you're going to fill it out by hand, <laughs> and uh, you're going to mail it into us. So you know, old school uh, snail mail. Uh, along with that mailed in application, with with you're actually going to put wet signatures on that application as well. Uh, but we're going to be asking for basic business documentation, nothing strange or unusual, nothing that any small business should not be able to to get their hands on. Uh, and, and if you don't have it at hand, you should be able to talk to your attorney or whatever. We're, we're really looking for, um, you know, if you're, you're an LLC, you're gonna have your articles of organization and your operating agreement. If you're, if you're a corporation, you're going to need, um, you know, corporate documents. Everything that you need is, is on page eight of that PDF application that I told you about. If you go to that application, you go to page eight, it's actually gonna be divided by the different types of businesses, whether you're a sole proprietorship, whether you're an LLC, whether you're a corporation, and then underneath whatever type of business structure or setup you have, it's going to tell you what you need to send us. And you're going to send those in to us. And we have to follow, you know, the process for this is, is all set in the regulations. So we're required to review and make sure all the documents we need are there first and notify the applicant formally that we have everything that we need to start the application process then we do the in-depth review phase. Uh, at the conclusion of the in-depth review phase, if we have any additional questions, we'll ask you, uh, and then we will try to set up some type of a meeting with you. Uh, that within, within the, the boundaries of New York State, those are face-to-face -face, uh, in-person meetings. With the out-of-state businesses, it's usually some type of Zoom or WebEx. The, uh, now with COVID, they're all Zoom, WebEx. And we consider that very, very important because we're not just we're not just coming out there to meet you. We we want you to meet us. We want you to see that we're the real thing. We're 
we're uh, about 75% of the staff of our tiny little division is uh, veterans themselves. And we understand right away, there's a lot of mistrust in government programs that veterans have. And we want, we want you to know when you come to us and you apply for our certification that we're the real thing, that we're veterans ourselves. We're doing this because we care about veterans and we're determined to make this an, an effective program. We have 90, 98 New York state agencies and authorities that are required to meet this 6% SDVOB goal. Uh, that's a lot of different types of agencies. A lot of and, uh, the opportunities are huge. We've got, uh, we've passed, we have 840 certified businesses right now. Uh, our growth rate, as far as the disbursements from state agencies to these businesses has been increasing by about 100% every year, which means we're doubling what we're spending with SDVOB every year. Last year, which is only our fourth year of, of tracking this information, we surpassed $100 million annually to SDVOB. The opportunities are huge. I, I don't really try to get into telling people what kind of work New York State is looking for because it's looking for everything. It's looking for all kinds of stuff. We've got 64 university campuses. We have an entire prison system. Uh, we have all kinds of offices, whether dealing with substance abuse or the Department of Transportation paving roads. Whatever, whatever a state needs to do to run, we want to try to get service-able veterans involved in that. Thank you, Anthony. <laughs> Michael, send us home, please. Tell us uh, what someone should do if they're interested in uh, certification with the state of California. Well, one of the things that I like to say is once, if you have time, please visit our booth that we had set up. We have a virtual booth that has many information, uh, how to get certified, what qualifications you need, information on resources that you we have available to you. All of that is available in our booth. Please go there. Uh, it's called State of California Department of General Services, which is our pretty much our headquarters. I'm just a small branch inside that big building. Uh, nevertheless, though, check our booth out to get information. I can go on and on, but we have a lot of stuff available for you. The other thing that I have mentioned by the panelists, the state really wants to ensure that veterans are included. And if you're not included with state procurements or business with the state, we try to help you with our reciprocity partners throughout the state. Uh, the other thing that we do as well, is we help uh, put you in contact with resources. Some of the resources we spoke about, you know, the Procurement Technical Assistance Centers, otherwise known as the PTACs. We have the uh, Veteran Business Outreach Centers, the VBOX. We have um, SCORE, which is retired executives that are have already have been in your shoes and now have volunteered you to help you get from point A to point B without making the same mistakes that they've already made. We also have, uh, Oh, the small business developmental centers. All those uh, resources are available to you as veterans within the state of California and other uh, places within the country because they have these uh, resources available throughout the country. To please, I implore all of you who are in attendance today and online to seek out that uh, information because they can help you move from point A to point B. If you have a business plan or don't have a business plan, they can help you with all of that. Funding, uh, information. Information is key to success here when doing business with government. You can easily fall in the holes, but you wanna make sure that you get diverted around those by using the resources like Philip has, Anthony and Chanel. We're all here to help you. But my recommendation is there's free resources out there that you don't have to pay for, uh, which the ones that we have just mentioned to utilize them to best benefit your business so that you can find success in what you're trying to do. So that's what I have to have, uh, have to say. I mean, our certification, we're pretty much the same as Anthony. Only difference is, is that we're just a little further ahead, he, you know, in regards to we're all online, uh, our application online, but Anthony is growing fast and he's, he's I'm sure he's going to bypass us based on the fact that they have a larger goal. And, you know, Anthony is just, I'm on the West Coast, he's on the East Coast, but we're still, all of us are doing the same thing, trying to ensure that veteran businesses are a part of our operations and getting contracts whenever possible. So Jackson, thank you very much. Thank you, panelists. That's what I got to say to in my, my parting. I hope that's good enough. If not, I'm sorry. Thank you, Michael. And thank you all uh, that joined us today in closing, if you're interested in learning more 
all the panelists today uh, are exhibitors uh, in the virtual exhibit hall. So you'll be able to see their booths and learn more about the certification there. Every single one of these certification programs has a website with a phone number. The people that answer that phone will be able to answer any of the questions that you have that were not answered today, as well as resources like PTAC, VBOC, and Service Corps of Retired Executives. I uh, just want to thank you again sincerely. It's really nice to see you guys and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference. Hey, have fun, everybody. Thank you. <laughs>